Eight, number 738. We'll sing all four verses of number 738. We will glorify. We will glorify the King of kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of lords, who is the great I am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is the Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the of kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of lords, who is the great I am. Let's all have a moment of silence before the Lord. Good morning. And for all of our brothers and sisters, uh, buenos dias and dobro utro. It's a blessing for us to worship together today because worshiping together we are. As we are gathered together as God's family in God's name, wherever we are, it is a pleasure to be worshiping him all together today. Um, as we begin to worship the Lord, we're going to be opening our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, I'll begin with verse 17, and I'll read through verse 19. And if you address as Father, the one who impartially judges according to each man's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay upon the earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from the feudal way of life you inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's all of us lift our voices together and sing praise to God. Thank you. Good morning. We're going to start with a couple of songs and then we'll have a scripture reading and prayer like we normally do. So let's begin with number 851 in our songbooks. That's Blue Skies and Rainbows. Trying to pick songs we know, and if you're at home and don't have a songbook, hopefully you know these words. Blue skies and rainbows. Blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven are works that I see when my Lord is living in me. Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Nevermore will I be all alone since he promised me that we never would part. Green grass and flowers all blooming in springtime are works of the master I live for each day. Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Nevermore will I be all alone since he promised me that we never would part. Tall mountains, green valleys, the beauty that surrounds me all make me aware of the one who made it all. Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Nevermore will I be all alone since he promised me that we never would part. Next is number 810, 810, which is Jesus Loves Me. <clears throat> 
We'll sing Jesus Loves Me, and then we'll have our scripture reading. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves the children dear, children far away or near. They are safe when in his care every day and everywhere. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus, take this heart of mine. Make it pure and holy thine. Thou hast bled and died for me. I will henceforth live for thee. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Our scripture reading today is going to come from Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. For which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? As we go to our Father in prayer, we're reminded that human frailty has existed throughout the Bible. And in all cases of plague and drought and disease, there's always been a God there with an outstretched arm waiting to hear from his children. And he's there today, and so we go to him in prayer. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne, we acknowledge you as the creator of heaven and earth. We acknowledge you as the provider of all good things and our rock in times of crisis. We praise your name, Father, and give you thanks for your love for us, for your patience, for a throne of mercy and of grace. We come to you, Father, this morning at a unique time in our lives where it would seem that the entire earth is vulnerable to a virus. A virus, Heavenly Father, that among other precautions and restrictions, keeps us this morning from worshiping together and in a manner that you would have us. We ask you, Father, to hear our prayer to intervene in the process of men to take this threat from us. We ask, Father, that you guide the actions and decisions that we make to eradicate this virus and bring calm to your people. Where there is fear, Father, give us strength. Where there is panic and chaos, give us clarity of mind and give us the hope, Father, that we find in you and in your word. We thank you for the health and the peace that this family here has enjoyed. We're thankful for our elders who bear the weight of the decisions that have to be made in circumstances like these. Continue, Father, to bless us and keep us, and while we await thy will to be done, 
we ask that you rid us of this coronavirus, that we may worship together again. We ask these things in the name of Christ Jesus, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Before communion this morning, let's sing number 473. 473. Oh, how I love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of the Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Difficult decision for the elders to ask the family to stay away from the building this morning, except for those of us to be here to, to have a service we could stream. But I think we all agree it was a prudent decision. Because if you've seen from the news, you can be a carrier of this virus and not even know it. You can be a carrier and be asymptomatic. So I will tell you this morning, you don't see the normal, well, that is kind of interesting. We got the collection plate here. I'll take that down. You don't see the normal tap that they're not here. But what you're gonna see is bread, prepared by hands, wearing gloves, fruit of the vine, Poured by hands wearing gloves, and the only person that now has touched that cup is myself. And I'm sure the rest of you will be taking those same precautions at your home and with your families. But thank you for being with us. Even if you happen to be by yourself physically this morning, you're gathered with us. And we can worship with you in spirit and truth. Now with that, I will... I will actually now go into our, our normal communion service, but doing it solo. As a guy that's done it solo at small locations a few times in my life because of being deployed in various things, uh, this almost looks like one of those gatherings that it's in. But 
We're not alone, folks, with a handful of us that are here. All those brothers and sisters are with us. And there's one thing we all need to remember. And actually, I left my Bible turned to exactly where this past uh, Sunday evening we had an elders-led prayer service. A little bit out of the normal order, but so appropriate as it now turns out. In that, I chose to read a familiar pastor. I might even go into announce what it is. You'll all know it when I start. Barry's already turned to it, I'm sure. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. And if my fingers would actually let me turn the page proper. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is just as true as when the psalmist penned that, as it is true here this morning on March the 15th, 2020. Time has come and time is gone. In the Middle Ages, we had the bubonic plague. A few decades ago, we had an outbreak of swine flu, and I'm not trying to equate swine flu to what we're dealing with now. What seems like yesterday to me, we dealt with the aftermath of 9-11, even though it's, you know, so many years in the rearview mirror now. And the Lord was with us during all those times. And the Lord is with us today. And you know, we're also told another familiar passage that I just can never go away from. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him might be saved. And we know, we know from the scriptures that Jesus came. We know that Jesus suffered the most indignified death possible on the cross in that day. We know that it all was just beginning with his physical mortal death. Because on the third day he arose from the dead victorious over sin. And we know because he told us so that he now waits for us on the right hand of God the Father. We know that through his shed blood, we can be rectified and forgiven of our sins and through his blood and clinging to him, walking in the light, we can forever, ever be found in righteous and in sight on judgment day. We know that. And we know that in the first century, under very different circumstances, sometimes circumstances, to be quite honest, that are much more trying than what we're dealing with this morning. We know that on the first day of the week, the gospel family, the Christian family, the church found ways together to partake of the Lord's Supper. And now we're going to do that. For those of you that are home, uh, everyone, the, the 20 that are in the pews, year or so, the number, uh, they have the same emblems that I have up here. And so as, as I bless this bread for our communion service, I ask that you prepare at home for the same. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for all that he continually does for us. We ask that you watch over us and protect us during these trying times. Father, bless this bread, because this bread lets us know and lets us draw us back to your body on the cross, the body that was not defeated, the body that was resurrected on the third day. And as we partake of this, keep us always close to thee. In your son's name we pray.
Amen. Now I'm going to pause for about a, about a minute here to let, let folks at home uh, finishing up taking the bread because this morning we do not have gentlemen passing up and down the aisles. We do not have our normal four or five minutes to do that. Now in like manner, we have the fruit of the vine which signifies Christ's shed blood. That shed blood that to this very moment in time cleanses us of our sins. That shed blood that if we ever lose contact with, we do not have that guarantee of eternal life but if we do main contact with by walking in the light we have that absolute guarantee that no matter what happens in this earthly life a better life awaits for us beyond this existence would you pray with me as we offer thanks for the blood father thank you for Jesus and God the Father, thank you for your love of your people. That your love of your people was so great that you could not see your creation departed from you forever. And after we, your creation, gave him the Satan's temptations, by in effect taking yourself and assuming the mortal role that you came as a baby, and you showed us that it was possible to walk the face of this planet that you also created and to live a pure, sinless life. And then, Father, as, as you allowed yourself in the form of Jesus to be put to an earthly death and then rose victorious, victorious over that death, as your earthly blood had been shed and now you take that same shedding of, of the perfect one and let it cover our sins as we partake of this fruit of the vine, let us always, always, always stay committed to walking in the light and deserving the forgiveness of our sins that we receive through Christ's shed blood. In your son's name we pray. Now, as some men that preside at the table like to say, having finished the Lord's Supper, oh, we'll have an opportunity to lay by and store. It's going to be a little bit different this morning. Uh, first of all, this plate is not even going to be passed among those of us that are here. For those of you that's taking communion here on a Sunday night, it's going to be Sunday night style. When you're done, if you want to put something in here, come up and do it. For our family that aren't physically with us this morning, uh, I think there's a note that's gone out that's been published that says, you're more than welcome to, uh, to send your normal contribution to the church office via mail, and we'll take care of it that way. Uh, obviously, we don't know how long this uh, current crisis is going to last. Uh, so I can't even, uh, I'll be quite honest with you. My guess is, and the elders discussed this, whether we elected to be prudent and not have physical 
building full today, we certainly were going to be here by this time next Sunday. So this is going to be an extended thing. So if you want to mail a check, please do. If you want to come by, and I have not even discussed how limited office hours we're going to have here or not. But the best way to do it is to mail a check, and it'll, U.S. mail continues to run. We can pick it up that way. With that, we have been so blessed. We really have. I started it earlier in this service. We have the blessing of having a way to stream this service to our family members that aren't here with us. We have the blessing of having the, the technology in place for that, even though I'll have to tell you it took some, uh, some uh, creative engineering by Brother John Fowler this morning to get it up and running since we had a cabling problem. But we are up and running. We're blessed living in this country. We're blessed that now that we're dealing with something like coronavirus that we actually have the best medical resources at our disposal in the world. And those are being rallied. We're blessed because Jesus came and gave us a way to have our sins redeemed. With that in mind, would you all pray with me? Father, thank you for all the funds that are, that are contributed to the Lord's effort here at Manassas. Thank you for our family members that, that many make sacrificial contributions so that your work can go forward. And Father, Thank you, whether a donation, a contribution is a penny or $10,000, it does not matter. Because every contribution given to you from the heart is worth the value of gold. Forgive us our sins. In your son's name we pray. First one in there. <laughs> After Barry's lesson this morning, we'll sing I Am Resolved, and that's uh, number 255 in the songbooks. I am resolved, number 255. So we'll sing that after Barry's lesson. And then before the lesson, let's sing Seek Ye First, number 886, 883, sorry, 883 in the songbook. Seek Ye First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you singing hallelujah hallelujah ask and it shall be given unto you seek and ye shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you, singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given unto you, seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you, singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every From the mouth of God, singing Alleluia, Alleluia. 
Good morning. It's good for us to worship together this morning, wherever we are. Uh, if you're of a certain age, you can remember the show Romper Room, you know? And the lady who did Romper Room had this mirror, well, this thing that was supposed to hold a mirror, but it was empty. And she would say, I could see, and she'd say everybody's name. And I would wait for her to say my name, but she never did. But uh, I know where you sit, and I can see you all here this morning, and we are worshiping together <clears throat> this morning, and it is a blessing. Um, the lesson this morning was, was uh, scheduled um, about a year ago, approved by the elders last October, <clears throat> and when something unusual happens in the life of the congregation, you know, I, I have the impulse to change things and try to say something uh, meaningful, but... Uh, then I realized that what the Word has said that was scheduled a year ago on this very day is what needs to be said anyway. So uh, we are not uh, changing uh, our, uh, our plans today. This is the lesson that I would have delivered otherwise. Our series this year is entitled Behold the Lamb, and we're spending the year with Jesus, and this month we've been spending time with Jesus in his youth. And next Sunday, we'll be talking about his baptism. But today, we're visiting the one episode from the life of Jesus' youth that we have in any of the four Gospels. And it's in Luke chapter 2, if you'd like to follow along there. In your New Testaments, we'll be looking uh, at verses 39 through 52 today. And as we've said every Sunday, as we've looked at these passages, it is important to have our Bibles in, open in, in front of us and, and to read along in these passages again today. This period of time is often referred to as the missing years, you know, as if there's this gap, there's this large, dark spot in the biography of Jesus that we, that we can't fill in. In fact, over the years, particularly in the medieval period, people just made up stories um, that they would write down and then pass on as gospel when they were just fabricated because people so hungered for knowledge about what happened to Jesus during this time. Last week, we looked at the two verses that frame this passage. Verse 40, the child continued to grow and become strong, increasing in wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And verse 52, Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. And we noticed what we learned about Jesus' upbringing and growth. That Jesus grew up, as we said last week, four square. He grew up intellectually and physically, spiritually and socially. And we also noticed the resources that he had been given. Observant parents who went to church <laughs> every week, as we will learn this week and next week, and observe the feast days. And he grew up in a small town, but among observant people, as we're going to be seeing in the coming weeks as well, that he was allowed to grow up without becoming a celebrity. You know, he, he led a, a normal life and that he had God's word. He understood God's word, was trained in God's word. We looked at that verse from Luke chapter four, that it was his custom to read God's word the way Ben read the word today um, whenever they came together for synagogue service. And then there was the relationship that he had with his father. We're going to see those resources on display today. There's so much that we want to know. You know, what was he like as a big brother? Um, how did he negotiate his relationship with other boys? How did he negotiate his relationship with girls? How did he negotiate his relationship with parents who didn't always understand who he was and, and who had unrealistic expectations about what they wanted his ministry to be and how they wanted him to conduct it. Um, we don't know the answer to all those questions, but what we're given is enough. We ended last week with that passage in First Peter, or Second Peter, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 3, that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. We have everything we need, and we have everything we need through the knowledge of Jesus. And therefore, what we are given from his youth is everything that we need, because it is through the knowledge of Jesus that God provides us with every resource we will find ourselves needing in our lives. So, 
This is the episode that we're given. Let's read it together. I'm going to begin with verse 39. It talks about after they had been to the temple to dedicate Jesus when he was an infant. <clears throat> when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city of Nazareth. And the child continued to grow and become strong, increasing in wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And his parents used to go to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he became 12, they went up there according to the custom of the feast. And as they were returning after spending the full number of days, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem and his parents were unaware of it, but supposed him to be in the caravan. And they went a whole day's journey and then began looking for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they didn't find him, they came back to Jerusalem and looked for him. And it came about that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, son... Why have you treated us this way? Behold, your father and I have been looking anxiously for you. And he said to them, Why is it that you were looking for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? And they did not understand this statement which he had made to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and he continued in subjection to them. And his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Well, this is a remarkable episode in a lot of ways, in ways that we would not understand here in the year 2020 without some historical background. But it is also a passage about patterns. Jesus' family did everything according to the law. Jesus' parents went every year to the feast. Jesus' family treasured these things in their heart as they happened. And we have these two framing verses to tell us he grew up the way we all have to grow up. We have to grow up intellectually, spiritually, physically, socially. And he grew up, grew up in those ways like a, like a normal kid would grow up. So it's framed with the pattern of life. And we understand something about Jesus' upbringing. Jesus is 12 years old, which is a hard age to be. And it was a particularly uh, unique age as a Jewish young man at the time because he was on the cusp of becoming a full man in the community, which would have happened when he was 13 years old. He's not 13 yet, so he's just 12. And as people came to Jerusalem for the Passover, they walked, most people walked, and they walked from their villages and, and small lanes became large roads and large roads became main roads and trickles of people became, you know, rivers of people. And so this is, there's a lot of folks there. You know, imagine uh, Walmart last week at all, you know, at any time of the day. It was that kind of, of, of crowd, that kind of, that kind of mayhem. And the men walked with the men and the women walked with the women. And at 12, where could Jesus be? Well, he could be with his dad. He could be with his mom. He could be with someone else in the group. They've come and they've experienced Passover and they started home and they just assumed he was with the group. And he wasn't. And every parent has had that um, experience where they've turned around where their kid was supposed to be and their child was not there. Um, I, think, I think anyone with a child knows the panic of his mom and dad and they are not in a car and there's not a bullet train, okay? They have to walk a whole day just to get back to Jerusalem. And then they have to look for him, either for another day or for another three days, depending upon how you do the math of the passage. All over the city, and Jerusalem is, a, is not a small city. The, the, the population of Jerusalem, apart from Passover, might have been a few hundred thousand people. Um, no, no cell phones, you know. No way to put out an amber alert. There's no, no, nothing. I mean, you're wandering around like, 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 like ants, you know, in a massive anthill looking, looking for, for a grain of sand in, in, in a larger, in a, in a, on a large beach. And, and that's what they're doing, trying to find their son. And finally they find him 
And he's there in the, evidently the great school because the temple was more than just a place of worship. It was a treasury. It had its own security force, and it had basically a graduate school for rabbis, the great school, the great synagogue there at the temple. And Jesus is there in grad school at 12 years old with all the smart guys of the law, and he's not only answering their questions, but he's asking them questions. In other words, he's taking not only the role of star pupil, but of teacher as well, which is an amazing thing. Usually, when we look at this passage, we we focus on Mary. The fact that women were not supposed to speak to men in public, a woman was certainly not supposed to address a rabbi in public. And yet his mother is the one who speaks out and and, and, and interrupts this sacred event and (laughs) says, why have you done this to us? We've been so frightened looking for you, which every parent sympathizes with. And... um, and then Jesus gives an answer that makes sense to us and with 2020 hindsight, but we know would not make sense to her. And he said, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be here in my father's house? Several times I've preached this sermon, a sermon about this passage, and I've said to the moms in the audience, would that be an okay answer for you? And I get, you know, sometimes you get some really frightening looks from the moms. No, it would not. But it, but it makes sense to Jesus, and it makes sense to us if we'll think about it. And it says so much, so much about Jesus and his upbringing and what we need to learn from it, what, what equips us in the example of Jesus today. Saying it had to be in my father's house is the most natural thing for us to hear to say we've talked about God as our father all morning and we do every day and we do every time we're together Jesus teaches us to do that but it was not natural for a Jew to say that Abraham's father Abraham his father who in the Old Testament treated God like they had a father-child relationship David David clearly did places like Psalm 131 you know I'm a child on my parents knee That's my relationship with you. You know, David often describes himself as a small child or a little lamb, as we read today around the table. But who else? I mean, that's not part of their consciousness, but it was part of Jesus' consciousness. Jesus understands that he is the Son of God at this point in his life. He has that awareness that he has a parent-child relationship with his father in heaven and it is that understanding that draws him to this place because the temple represents in a very real sense an extra measure of the presence of God that's where the holiest place is separated by that curtain that will be torn in half when Jesus is crucified the place that the that the um, the high priest will only go once a year uh, we're not sure um, uh, whether or not the, the Ark of the Covenant was in that space, but if it was in that space, and it traditionally should have been in that space, there was the mercy seat on the Ark, which was the presence of God. God's everywhere. We know that. We're taught that in the Old Testament, but there's something about that space that represented that gave the experience of an extra measure of an awareness of God's presence here on earth. And at 12 years old, he he wanted time to be with his father. And that wasn't a metaphor for something. It was something that was real. It was a relationship and experience that he had that was actual, that was real that meant something to him and that was necessary to him, that was breath to him and food to him. And that's why it made perfect sense for him to stay behind in his own mind and why it would make perfect sense to him that if his parents wanted to find him, there was only one place for them to come looking. And that was at the temple. This must have been something like what Jesus would later experience on the Mount of Transfiguration, not long before he was crucified, when he's given a measure of his 
his presence, his, his being before he came here. A little taste of home before he was called home after accomplishing his work here on earth. This must have been a coming home, a spending time with someone um, who, who otherwise did not seem quite so, so close as he did in this place. I had to be here in my father's house, he says, and he teaches us to call God Father. He did it right there during his own ministry. Ben read it today in the Sermon on the Mount. When he teaches us to pray, the very first words of the prayer that he gave to us as a model prayer in Matthew 6 are what words? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And that lesson was imprinted on the minds of his disciples and in the hearts of his disciples for the rest of their lives, throughout the New Testament, we, God is our Father. As we read today in 1 Peter chapter 1, if you call as Father, God who's in heaven, then live a certain way. Because that's who we are. Behold what love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. And that is who we are. 1 John chapter 3 verse 1. It's true for us because of him. We have the same relationship with God. How was he able to grow the way he grew and not sin? How was, what, we know what he did, but how did he do it? It's right here. Everything that we need to know is in this text. He had knowledge of God's word, which was on display right there in the synagogue, at the great school, at the great synagogue. He was obedient he went home and was obedient to his parents as he would be obedient in all things to his heavenly father and finish his ministry without sin. And he knew who his father was. He could not survive without that parent-child relationship that he had with his father in heaven and which he gives to us, makes possible for us. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, Verse 9, there was the true light which coming into the world enlightens everyone. He was in the world. The world was made through him. The world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as did receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even those who believe on his name. Behold the Lamb. What do we see today? We see Jesus as the Son of God, and we see Jesus giving us the ability, the right, which is what John in his gospel says, to become a child of God ourselves so that we have the same relationship with him. And it is not tied to a place. It's not tied to a place. This, this, this building, in a very real sense, feels empty today, but then it doesn't feel empty at all because God's presence is everywhere, and we're connected by it wherever we are. And you are no less in the presence of God if you're watching me deliver this lesson online than if you're sitting here in this room. There would have been no need for Jesus to have stayed behind. At, at nowadays, because we're living in times after his death, his burial, and his resurrection, when we can be born again of water and spirit in the waters of baptism and know that we're truly children of God. It's not tied to place. And that's why all of us together today are God's children today, one family today, around the world today, uniting with each other and our Father. And not just today, but every day. What do we see when we behold the Lamb? We see the child of God that reminds us that we are children. The child of God who reminds us that we are children of God. That he's our father in heaven. That we have the same parent-child relationship that he, the only begotten child of God, has with his father in heaven. That we share the same home. And the same pathway home. As we close today, that's what I want us to remember. 
as brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And through Jesus, we're all children of God. And we have access to the same relationship that saw him through his life on this earth. The same relationship that brought him home to heaven will bring us home to heaven. And if you're not a child of God, or if you have any other need, you know, you can always contact us. You may not be here today, but if you need to be baptized and you contact any of the elders or the office or me, we will be here at any time of day or night to baptize you. If you need our prayers and you communicate those to us, those prayers will be offered in the way that best serves you. But right now, we're going to close our service with a hymn and a prayer and some announcements. Let's lift our voices together and sing praise to God. Charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, still will I enter in. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Barry, thank you for that great lesson. And uh, it reminds me, as a preacher's kid, uh, some of the lessons Dad would give on, uh, you know, northwest Minnesota to uh, an, an audience of, uh, well, me and Mom and the, my brother and sister. He would deliver with just as much uh, fervor and all the content that you expected. And, and so we got it all, uh, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us online. Uh, today. I know this is really unusual, and technically it's been difficult to, to even figure out. The cameras weren't working uh, 20 minutes before we started this morning. Um, so, so bear with us, and thank you so much for your patience today. Uh, just want to kind of run through things. If you haven't heard, uh, everything's canceled. Uh, all the events here at the building are canceled for the uh, next uh, two weeks, and um, that includes... Um, Today there was going to be a Bible baby shower for, for Diana Amanqua. Uh, that's been postponed. Um, and um, there was going to be a reception for our Laurel Bible Bowl participants. That's been postponed because Bible Bowl was postponed. So Laurel was kind of one of the first to cancel things. Uh, Monday night for the master, tomorrow night. No, that's canceled. Uh, next Sunday's Relay for Life kickoff. No, that's postponed. Uh, youth Group Devo next Sunday night. No, that's postponed. Um, so what isn't? Um, being together online, being together over the internet, texting, talking to each other on the phone as much as you can, that needs to continue, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Some of you have asked about Lads to Leaders. Um, I know um, Carlton and Sharice Dodson are in touch with the Lads to Leader uh, organization. Uh, I can't imagine what they're having to go through with the thousands of participants that have conventions on the same weekend in several different cities across the world, as it turns out. Um, so they're, they're working through things. They don't have anything official to give us yet. So as soon as we know, we'll let you know. In the meantime, keep practicing at home. That's the best I can tell you to do. Keep, keep working. Um, the other question I got yesterday was, um, we're supposed to be hosting an area-wide uh, Spanish language service here uh, two weeks from tonight on March 29th. What about that? I don't know. As soon as we know, we'll let you know. So we'll, we're, we're kind of play, playing this by ear uh, together. So, um, so that's something that we're aware of and we, we've got to be thinking about. Um, 
uh, prayer list. I, I don't have the full prayer list, but I do know a couple of things. I know that Rena Howard has developed pneumonia and she's at home uh, with that. Um, so pray for Rena and hopefully she will recover quickly. Uh, we got a text this morning that um, Paul Linton is in the hospital. Um, it's been a crazy week. <laughs> Let's see. So since last week, he has been flown to the East Coast. That's great news. He was in a, um, a rehabilitation facility, uh, care facility in Gaithersburg, Maryland. But, and that happened on Thursday, Thursday night. But now he's in the hospital with an infection. So keep, uh, keep praying for Paul. Keep praying for Denise and, and their family. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, what do we want to do through this? Uh, we've been talking yesterday and, and a lot yesterday and a lot, a lot together since in, in, all week. Um, as a congregation, uh, we just felt as elders that one of the things that was really important was for us to do our part as part of the community to help what the medical community is calling flattening that curve. You know, so we don't have too many cases at once. So how can we reduce the chances of exposure? And this is one way we do that. So that's step one. Uh, but as a congregation, through this pause of so many activities, we want to make sure that we are caring for each other uh, as best we can and maybe in new creative ways. So how can we provide for each other? Uh, we have always provided for our families. If there is a need and if anyone has a need, please let one of us know. We know there's going to be some lost work time, there might be some unpaid sick leave, and there, so there might be some expenses that we can help with. Please let us know how we can help. Um, another good idea that came from the Home Builders Group is, um, and Jessica Lazier is going to be the point of contact for this, and we'll send out more details. <clears throat> but if you are able to, to help someone, like take groceries to someone's house, to pick up medicine and take it to them, then maybe that's a way that we could help. Um, you don't have to make contact and set it at their door if, they, if, they, uh, if they'll accept that. And if you're someone in need of help, uh, please let us know. And like I said, uh, Jessica is going to be the point of contact for that, and we'll put that information out there. So if you're in one of those target populations, 60 or over, or having a, su a suppressed immune system in any way, um, let us know that if we can help you get stuff to you, uh, bring stuff, bring medicine, bring groceries to you, uh, l uh, let us know. So we want to kind of look for opportunities like that that help us provide for our family, but also help us shine our lights in the community. The other thing that we are still doing is collecting food for, uh, for our food pantry. We're, I know we're going to have an increase of people that can't get food. And so we're, we're going to need uh, access to that pantry. We're going to need more food for the pantry. So if you can this week, if you actually have groceries, you can drop them off at the building. I'm sure they're going to be needed. We have been collecting food for what is called the Nourishing Ninjas over at Cougar Elementary. Um, we're trying to reach out to Cougar Elementary. I know all the school systems are closed now for the next several weeks, which just increases the need for those families that we were targeting with that program. So we're going to find out, can we still help with that? Can, is there something else we can help with? So stay tuned for ways to help with that. Uh, but if you are collecting items for that, um, and if you're out this week, can you drop it by the building? That would be appreciated. A um, lot of things, a lot of ways that we can help help each other get through this, and I know we will, and also just ways that we can help shine in our communities uh, by helping, by checking on our neighbors, by just talking to people uh, from a distance, right? So, uh, but, but we'll get through this, and I thank everyone for being here today. Let's end with prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much. We thank you so much that we can call you our Father. And Father, we, we come in your presence and we thank you so much for Jesus, for letting him come, for loving us so much that you would let him come to this, this world. And Father, thank you for letting us see that he grew up a boy, a child in a family, and help us to know what that family felt like. Father, help us 
get through this time of crisis in our country and the world with the infection going around. Father, help us to find ways to help each other. Uh, bless the doctors and medical community. Help them to find ways to stop and treat and prevent uh, this disease. And in the meantime, we pray that you would be with us and be with those that are sick and hurting uh, already and for other reasons. Uh, bless Paul. We pray that you'll be with the doctors that are helping him fight his infection and get him uh, comfortable and safe. And Father, please be with Rena as she fights an infection and help her body to heal. Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to be in your presence. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Father, bless us in that life. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen.